Vikram, um, how big an honour is this? Hello, Lawrence. Um, hello, everyone. Um, how big an honour? Um, it, it, it is an honour. Um, I suppose the fact that I've, I've had an association with the club as a player uh, and then had an association with the club as a, as a coach and, and part of the support staff has given me a sort of broad experience as to what, uh, what is involved at Surrey. Um, and the and the, the, the people that are that are involved both from a playing and a non-playing point of view, um, and essentially the history of the club is 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 sort of present in everybody's mind. Uh, there's no question about about all of that. But what what makes it a particular honour is the people that I'm working with, um, and I'm looking forward to sort of getting started on Monday when cricket does return. Um, but your point about an honour. Uh, I suppose, historically speaking, that there is there is there is no bigger club uh, in England. Um, uh, but I, for me, the honour lies more in the fact that I'm working with some brilliant people, both players and support staff, and uh, the sort of broader club. You've obviously been an assistant coach for, for a while. I mean, what sort of a head coach do you imagine you'll you'll be? Do you have a sort of vision for how you'll you'll operate? Um, in terms of visions, uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll pretty much be who I am. Uh, those that have sort of come across me, uh, uh, I try and be as supportive as I can be of, of players. I, I see players at the centre of uh, pretty much everything that I do in, in my coaching. Um, I was very grateful to, to work with some brilliant coaches um, throughout, my, throughout my playing career. Uh, and I suppose I'll take a great deal from the example that I saw, the, saw in them. Um, and essentially, um, having having spoken to a few since I stopped playing and, and, and sought some advice as to as to how to go about my coaching, I think uh, I'll sort of rely on on those coaches and, and, and their example. Um, but uh, in terms of vision, I, you know, it, it's clearly important for us to to be a successful uh, team. Uh, that's uh, first and foremost. But I, you know, equally important, I see my role as developing players and developing some young uh, young cricketers at Surrey. Uh, we've been very, very lucky. We've been, or, or rather, uh, there's been a lot of work gone towards producing some England cricketers. Uh, I think that that should be a, a remit of all all clubs to produce England cricketers. Um, we've had a good crop come through just recently. We've, we've experienced some success, and, and you know, long may they fly. Um, hopefully, that sets a good example for the others as well. Uh, there's some good youngsters who are, are sort of on the periphery, just starting to make their move towards higher honours, um, with, with lads going into this, these training camps. Um, so I'm hugely excited for them, but I'm hugely excited for the group as well. Uh, the balance is, is a good one where you have experience, uh, which is necessary to show some sort of guidance towards young lads. Um, but there's also the enthusiasm of, of, of some very special and talented young lads as well. So uh, very much front and centre of my mind is sort of develop, developing uh, Surrey cricketers to, to sort, of, sort of represent England and uh, and offers the best opportunity for us to be successful as a team. Thank you. Um, Iggy, do you want to go next? I think you offered to start at exactly the same time as Lauren. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, uh, you, Vic, hi, hi. You mentioned about uh, producing England players. I think five of the 30 going down to Southampton next week, sorry, and, and four of those homegrown. I suppose you, you might partially claim also Dom Sibley as well as somebody who's emerged through the Surrey system. What are Surrey doing right in terms of producing England players? Uh, I don't think there's there's one simple sort of answer to that, John. I think I think the very fact that uh, we're committed to, or certainly um, the work that uh, Gareth Townsend's done with the academy and uh, and and in my time, certainly on the support staff, that sort of commitment towards developing Surrey players and bringing those those players through and offering them opportunity um, to play in the first team uh, bodes well for producing England cricketers uh, or gives them the opportunity to show exactly how how good they are, how uh, you know where they can go, it gives them the opportunity to grow. Um, but I think a lot of a lot of that must come from even prior to perhaps the work GT does, uh, the, the age group sort of um, uh, coaches, all of the, the sort of commitment towards good programs that are developed uh, and sort of maintained throughout the age groups. Then there's a, obviously a transition to the academy. 
Um, and that's a, that's a fairly challenging environment. I know I know Gareth Townsend pushes those guys um, hard. Uh, and then I, I, I firmly have the belief that if you see see example of your peers going through, or somebody like a uh, like an Oli Pope who's obviously gone through the whole system, then it's very likely that if you are presented with a similar opportunity, you sort of see the, the path ahead. Um, and it's often been the case, isn't it? I'm, I'm sure you you know new, numerous sort of scenarios where a crop of youngsters have come through together because one of their mates has gone through and, and been able to achieve. Uh, something fairly special and the others think well if he can then, then I've got every chance and I think there's something in that um, so uh, you know I, I don't think it's just one particular thing I, I think it's a number of things all, all sort of thrown into the pot that, uh, that, that have given us the, the sort of reasonably successful period we've had of, of guys going through and playing. Um, that said it's, it's uh, you know you need to be minded that that's not not just an automatic conveyor belt where you just anticipate that that will forever be the case. <laughs> You happen to go through sort of periods where you have, uh, have a group of guys go through, and there might there might be uh, a period where we're actually you know only only one or two go through, or you know none perhaps on. on years. Um, but I think in terms of planning, you've just got to try and see that that pipeline's maintained. Could, could you tell us a little, a little bit about uh, Amar Verdi, who's not been seen in an international squad before? Is he is he a guy who impresses you? Yeah, he's a he's a he's an exciting prospect. Um, he's um, a very talented off spinner, um, and yeah, talent is a word sort of thrown around a little bit um, loosely at times. Um, potential, all of those things. He ha he has all of those. He's got some real skill um, that could set him apart. Real skill. He has a um, ability to spin the ball. Um, he's a very uh, attacking minded type of bowler. Um, sometimes can be hard on himself, but that's I, I suppose that's just the, the sort of uh, enthusiasm of youth. Um, he's had a he's had an interesting sort of journey up until now. He's had to work hard on, hard on all aspects of his game. Um, and that comes with skilled and talented people. Uh, they start aspect uh, of being important as far as their performance is concerned, but with the right people around him, uh, and by that I mean the right sort of um, uh, strength and conditioning coaches, the, the right, type, right type of support staff, both from an England point of view and a Surrey point of view. I think he's, he's getting to the point where he understands that in order to be a professional cricketer, he needs to be an athlete now. Um, he, need, he needs to, to sort of be minded of his nutrition, his, his, his fitness. And, and he's responded extremely well to that. Uh, you know, he's, he's really challenged himself and he's, uh, he's, he's probably, you know, one of the fitter lads in our, in our sorry, squad now, which, which is sort of giving him an understanding of how that will transfer and enhance his skill as well. Uh, Dino, do you want to go? Uh, yeah, morning, Vic. Uh, congratulations on the, uh, on the appointment. Hello, Dino. Uh, um, you know, obviously, with, with your career as a player and, and then in the coaching sphere, off to IPL as, as well as at Surrey, um, clearly you're the, the, the leading candidate for the job and, and, and I'm sure that was the case. But it was widely reported that you're the first Asian head coach of a, of a first-class team and, and, and the, the subject of race has been a, a pretty pertinent one in, in recent weeks. Um, and certainly people in the game have spoken out about that both from a kind of black perspective, but also from a BAME perspective. Does that bring any added pressure to you in this role, quite a high profile role, um, as a bit of a role model? Uh, Dean, my, my view on that is it, it's something that's um, often sort of spoken about. Um, and throughout my career, it's, it's, a, it's a question I've, I, I've sort of had to address, whether it be my sort of involvement as a player, um, whether it be uh, sort of then my, my transition into coaching and now in this position. Um, and, I, uh, and I've thought about this because of, because of all that is uh, going on uh, at the moment. Uh, and, and I've sort of read various comments um, uh, that have been made. Uh, my view on it uh, is this, um, you know, racism uh, in any walk of life is abhorrent, of course. And, um, uh, and I'm... And I, uh, and I genuinely do, do sort of feel um, 
a sense of regret for anybody who has experienced that, whether that be uh, cricket, whether that be in any walk of life. Um, and I think I'm, uh, I think I'm sort of um, uh, minded enough to, to realize that, that that perhaps is the case. I can, however, only speak of my own experiences. And in my own experiences, I've been very lucky. Um, both of the clubs I've, I've been involved with um, in my time at England, um, I, I consider myself very fortunate having seen some of the things that have been spoken about. And, 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 and as a result of that, I, I, and I'm minded of speaking of my own experiences, and, and it's not been the case, certainly in, in my career. Um, as far as your, your point about does it bring added pressure, um, I don't think so. I, I think the, the, the fact that um, I, I'm, I'm in charge, or rather I'm, I'm head coach of, uh, of Surrey, is sufficient pressure. Uh, for the fact that it will be a matter of, uh, of sort of uh, doing right by, uh, by the team and, 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 and being successful as a team. I, I don't think it's, it's, it's neither here nor there as far as if I'm successful or not successful because of, of, my, uh, because of my background. Uh, and I just also wondered, uh, of all the coaches that you've worked with over your career as a, as a player, both uh, domestically and internationally, which, which coach perhaps were you, or have you taken the most from? Which kind of style, which lessons have you learned from, from people you've worked with that will, will be put into practice now that you're head coach? Um, very often, you know, and I, and I actually sat, sat down and thought about, thought about exactly this. And, and, and to be honest with you, I'm, I'm not sidestepping the question at all. I, I think I'll take a lot, lot, of, lot from um, a lot of the coaches. I thought I right back to my time at Worcester when, um, uh, when the likes of Basil Dolabira were around and how, how he coached. Um, ginormous personality. Um, and, and, and I did. I thought, thought about exactly how he went about things. And there, there's, there's a lot of messages that he conveyed, but it's an entirely different time. Now. You know, the way he coached might, might have, uh, might have uh, sort of tested a few people. Uh, I was very appreciative of it, of course, at the time because I knew nothing else. Um, but more to the point in, in more recent times and I suppose where, where I've had sort of strong uh, coach player coach captain relationships Tom Moody was perhaps the, um, the first big influence um, who I've known a very long time so I was captain Tom made me captain when I was at Worcester um, and I keep in, in regular touch with him um, so I'm sure that I, I went and did some work with him um, at uh, the T10 uh, but he's something he's somebody I've always bounced things off um, from a playing point of view, from a cricketing point of view, and now from a coaching point of view. Um, I really enjoyed my time uh, as a player at Surrey under Graham Ford. Um, go, it goes about things very differently to other coaches that I've worked with. Um, but, you know, I certainly take a, a great deal from him uh, in, in terms of how he operated, and in terms of the manner he managed his, uh, his, his players. Um, and I saw the benefits and how he went about that. Um, uh, and also the likes of you know your, your Fletchers um, and how analytical he was, how he was able to, to present a, a situation from a batting point of view, how he was able to sort of uh, almost be scientific in, in the way he sort of explained things. Um, so I, I took a lot from him. So aspects of all of those, and most recently uh, my work with Michael Divinuti. Um, you know, I, I, I watched him operate uh, with. Uh, and I, I, was, I was sort of watched him evolve as a head coach. Uh, I took a great deal from his, uh, his sort of ability to adapt to new environments and stuff. So I've, I've tried to mention uh, a lot of, I've probably missed a few, but uh, I've tried to sort of stay fairly, uh, but, but it is the case. I think I'll take a great deal from, from all of those guys. Uh, the two biggest influences, Tom Moody and Graham Ford. You've obviously learned diplomacy from someone as well then. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> Uh, uh, George. Morning. Uh, congratulations, Vikram. Uh, a, 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 couple, uh, a couple of questions, if that's all right. Firstly, a um, real practical one. Are you planning on bringing anyone in, another coach, for that role that I suppose you've just vacated? And I noticed, as an aside, that that Graham Hick fellow has just become a, a free agent. <laughs> uh, and secondly, uh, sort of on the same thing that Dino was talking about, um, 
it does feel like a bit of a watershed moment in the game, and I think it probably should be. And, and I would ask this to anyone, I have to say. Um, do, do you think that part of the... Um, do you think there will be a, an attempt at Surrey and everywhere else, actually, to try and encourage uh, players uh, uh, with more racial diversity and, and that the game will better reflect in a few years um, our country? Um, thanks, George. First, on, so on your first point about bringing anybody in, um, I think that's the, the remit of the, the director of cricket, firstly. Uh, and and on, the, uh, on the point about the staff currently um, at, the, at the Key Oval, um, we're, um, we're sort of fortunate to have a, a, a very good support staff. Uh, I think Michael Divinuto made mention of this in some of the comments he's made uh, about the time he spent uh, at Surrey, he's uh, he, he viewed it as a, a very effective um, support staff, which which I, I agree with. Um, we've got a good working relationship. So at the moment, I, th I think we've got we've got bases covered. Um, but you know, that's perhaps a, bit, a question for to to Alex Stewart. Um, on your point, uh, as, as as this a watershed moment, um, you know, there, there certainly is a there certainly is a great degree of movement throughout the world, not just in in our sport, but I suppose in society in general, um, where where there might be a shift, uh, where where people's opinions are beginning to be heard, um, and if that is the case, then then great. Um, your point about uh, coming back to cricket specifically, I, I, I think we have, in my experience, and I, again, I, I reiterate, I can only speak of my experience, I think we have encouraged um, sort of involvement of people from different backgrounds. I've, I've played with uh, sort of players from all, all backgrounds. I've coached players from all backgrounds. Now, I suppose I'll, uh, I, I should temper that from the fact that I, I entirely appreciate that that might not be the experience for everybody else. Um, but certainly at Surrey with, with the uh, numerous sort of um, programs to encourage involvement of people from different backgrounds, uh, I, I view it as, as something that, that, is a, that is ongoing. If this sort of accelerates all of those matters, then, then great. And, and do I think it's necessary? Uh, well, it, I think society and, and, and all walks of life should reflect um, uh, the, the sort of demographic and the, the type of uh, society that, that, that is present in England. Um, uh, if, that, if that can be the case in cricket, then that's great. Thank you. Uh, Lewis, please yourself. Hi Vic Graham, congratulations on your appointment. Just, you. to, just to pick up on that point, given the diversity of the, the players that you've played with through, through your time as a player and, and as a coach, what, why has it taken this long to reach this, this moment where you are the, the first British agent to hold a position of head coach in county cricket? I couldn't possibly answer that. I've not, I've not been party to any of the decisions that appoints coaches. Um, so I, I, I couldn't tell you. The evidence would suggest, though, that the pool of people to pick from, that there, there has been a, a blocking of, of, of some across the, across the board if, if we've managed to get to this point and you're the first. Uh, if you were to look at statistical evidence, I, I suppose that might be the case. But, I, you know, I can't, I can't offer you an opinion strictly on the fact that uh, my position is, is the first British Asian as a, as a head coach. I, there, are some, there are some brilliant coaches. I, I do know that. I, I speak to... To some um, uh, some coaches from um, I suppose uh, BME backgrounds, uh, like Simon Patel, uh, is, a, is a brilliant coach. I, I often seek his advice. Um, there, was a, there was an incident where we were talking about spin bowling, um, uh, and he had some great advice for one of our youngest spinners. Um, there's some great coaches around the world um, that are from different backgrounds, but I couldn't I couldn't tell you why it's the case that that I'm the first person to be in position. I mean, it, it, there's the, there's Ajmal Shazad as well, who's, who's involved at, um, at MCC, he's a head coach. He's, um, but as far as the county is concerned, I couldn't tell you why it's taken so long. 
what challenges are you posed with and being a kind of stepping up from assistant to head coach with the same group of players? Are you going to have to change your approach at all? Um, no, I, I think I'm, I'm going to try and sort of remain true to my sort of coaching philosophy, which, uh, which as I've, I've sort of explained, the, you know, from the centre of my mind is to try and develop people as, uh, as players as well as uh, as young young human beings uh, going about their lives. I've got a good relationship with some of these, uh, with, with a lot of these guys. I've, I've worked more with some of the younger guys because of my time spent in the second team. Um, uh, and I know know all of them very well. Um, and actually, I, I, I consider myself quite lucky to have played with some of them. Uh, sometimes it can be a, a little bit tricky, uh, as is, as has been the case across a number of sports. That sort of familiarity at times is, is a difficult one to sort of separate when you get into the point where you've got a coach, coach player relationship. I suppose the fact that I've been assistant coach for a little while and I've, I've had a bit of a transition to, towards becoming a head coach, then then sort of hopefully eases those uh, those difficult scenarios and situations. Um, so I think I think the transition uh, from from assistant coach to head coach. Um, in my mind, I view as my sort of personal relationships with all of those guys from a coaching capacity. So, for example, the technical work I might be doing with any of the batters will continue. Um, there might, well, there will be a far more sort of um, strategic approach or I have a little bit more on my plate as far as the overall plan is concerned for different formats. Uh, and that's, that's the way I'd separate it. Um, Whilst I'd, I'd had, I was always involved in those conversations, um, which will continue to happen because you coach as, as, a, as a coaching team rather than an individual. Um, you know, there might be at times where uh, I, I might be leading those conversations rather than participating. Thank you. Thanks for going to Ali now. Um, hi, hi, Vikram. Um, uh, hi. Congrats on the, on, congrats on the role. I just, um, I just wanted to ask, uh, obviously, after your sort of um, playing career wrapped up, you, you probably had a few options because you, you've done some work with the PCA and that perhaps you may have even gone into the administration side of the game. I'm just wondering what has driven you into the coaching side of the uh, of the sport that's got you this far. And I just also wondered whether, where your ambitions lie. Could, I mean, would you one day perhaps like to be aiming for the England job? We might be jumping the gun a little, Ali, with, with that, but um, let's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yes, I, yes, I am, but my ambition, first and foremost, at the moment, is for, for the team I'm involved with. Um, and, uh, so let's, let's go back to the point about, you know, my, my sort of, um, uh, my decision as far as coaching was concerned as, as a second career. Um, I, during my playing career, I was minded that, that I was going to, to have to, um, well, as most players, um, have to have some sort of a second career. Um, and I tried to best prepare myself for that. I tried to, to try and sort of get myself qualified, um, try and study, try and get myself qualified for, um, for what might lie ahead. Now, uh, initially, uh, my involvement um, with the PCA um, sort of might have taken me down that route of administration, uh, which, I, which I really enjoyed my time at the PCA. And I, I, I took a great deal from that, from a personal point of view as well. Um, Professional Cricketers Association is a, is a brilliant organization. It, um, it sort of, well, one, it, it actually highlighted the point that you do need to take steps towards preparing for life after cricket, life after, life, certainly after playing, uh, which is what I did. And then, and then that led to, to sort of uh, uh, time spent with them um, in a, uh, a sort of chairman role for a while, and then, um, as things turned out, in a, in a brief role as a, as a acting chief exec. Brilliant experiences, um, um, and I might well have thought at the time actually that, that that's where I might end up um, in, in administration of some sort. Um, the, the move towards coaching really came about because of um, uh, because of Alex Stewart. Um, he, uh, he kindly spoke to me about uh, um, sort of being remaining involved at the club um, and initially sort of uh, spending some time uh, in the second team. Now, I, I made mention right at the start that I, I sort of benefited 
from working with a lot of exceptional coaches. Um, I certainly also had a good opportunity to work with some very generous players. Um, by, by that I mean generous with their time and, and attention. So I, I fully understood actually the, the impact a, a, a sort of a, a relatively senior figure um, and a more experienced figure has on, on younger lads. So I, I, I saw value in what uh, Alex Stewart was sort of suggesting I do for a little while and spend some time in the second team and work with some of those, uh, those, those youngsters to just pass on a little bit of experience and, and, and see how I felt about uh, being involved um, in that capacity. Uh, and, it, uh, and I suppose I'm, I'm grateful for that opportunity because that actually opened my, um, opened my eyes to, to my, um, my, my sort of desire to want to stay involved in a hands-on capacity with the game. Um, playing is wonderful. Playing is, uh, playing is perhaps the best part of any, 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 any players or you know anybody that's involved in, in coaching but coaching comes very close indeed uh, and that opportunity and that experience for the, the the sort of six months that i that i did that uh, made me understand that uh, and that was what's actually um uh sort of opened my eyes that well perhaps this this is an avenue i'd like to pursue so uh, i suppose i've uh, uh, I've got a lot to be grateful for as far as uh, Surrey's concerned, but certainly from uh, from a personal point of view, um, to Alex Stewart for the opportunity. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Ali. Uh, Jules? Um, hello, Vikram. Congratulations on the job. I Thank just you. wondered what you learned from your time in the IPL. What I learned from my time in the IPL? Uh, it's a fast-paced game. There's a lot of there's a lot of crowd noise. Mm -hmm. uh, no, my, <laughs> uh, my time at the IPL again a brilliant experience. Um, a really good franchise, uh, RCB. Uh, a, a very good franchise. Some good people. Gary Kirsten, um, you know, again a very successful coach. Uh, and just just to see sort of how people react in in, in sort of pressure situations uh, and and the likes of. The likes of Virat, who, uh, you know, when, when you talk of pressure, just not just the pressure of, uh, of the game, but uh, not just the uh, the sort of format and the crowd and all of that that goes with it and the, the media attention that goes with it, but just the, ex the weight of expectation on players and how best they, they deal with that um, uh, was a, a, a real insight into, you know, the superstars of the, of the game, if you like. Um, Strategically, I, I, I suppose uh, you know I, I got a great deal from it um, in, in sort of being planned. Um, the, uh, I, I think, in my my view, the, the, the shorter the game, the, the the sort of more planning there is required, um, and, and and that certainly was the case uh, in seeing some of the, the sort of more successful IPL teams. We had we had a tough time of it initially, but. We only just missed out on qualification, so the margins, I suppose, in uh, in 20, not just the games. Uh, there were there are a number of game number of games that were sort of won. Really, I recall a, a couple where uh, Andre Russell just took a game away from us. Literally, the game the game was all all done and dusted as far as we were concerned. But in the space of the last sort of three or four overs, um, a game that you thought. Uh, Kolkata had no right to win, uh, was one at a canter because of sort of individual brilliance. And, uh, and then there was a, a couple of other games as well, the return fixture we were, when, when RCB were on the right side of it. Um, gone for all money, but happened to get across the line because of uh, a superb sort of performance. Ramon Ali at the time got us across the line. Um, and then from a format point of view, we were, we were so everybody had written us off, but I think we were a point off qualifying. It was just one, one more win, and we would have probably finished um, uh, sort of comfortably qualifying. So that, so that, that idea of how, how the balance uh, shifts very quickly and momentum shifts very quickly to, to change the result of a game, as well as actually from a tournament point of view, um, you know, it's very small margins as far as success and failure is concerned. Thank you. Thanks, Jules. Uh, Stan, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, hi, Vikram. Congratulations, mate. Um, I just wanted to look uh, to the, hopefully, having some cricket in 
August and September. Um, I know it's an ongoing situation, but what would you hope, what would be best to have? Any cricket or a combination of red ball, white ball? What, what, what would you hope to have? Ideally, uh, uh, ideally, and I think that's the case in terms of the proposal being put forward. I think, I think, uh, I, as a player, I was always, I, I love the fact that we, we played different formats. I love, you know, uh, so I, initially, when twenty twenty came about, it was it was in the sort of middle of my playing career, and I love the fact that we played three formats. I love the fact that we played. Uh, championship cricket, red ball cricket, and two formats uh, with, uh, with the white ball. Um, so, just from a, a, a sort of uh, a cricket point of view, I would love for, for us to, to be de delivering the, the, the full program. Now, that that's that's not going to be the case in in, in terms of the uh, the time left in the season. Um, I, I would I would love for there to be uh, championship cricket. I'd love for there to be four day cricket, and then. And have have an element of um, uh, 2020 cricket, um, but I'm minded of uh, you know medical advice as far as that's concerned. So if, if there's any opportunity to play um, to play red ball cricket, then I'm certainly all for it. And I, I know a lot of work's uh, taking place to to sort of get to the point where there is a possibility that we could play uh, red ball cricket. I think I think the public. I think that's what they. The, the sort of members and uh, and people that support cricket would like to see as well. I think they, they, they'd certainly appreciate the fact that we do, or you know, certainly make make every attempt to try and play red ball cricket as well as white ball cricket. Thanks, Matt. Iggy, did you have another another question? Yeah, yeah just just quickly, sorry. Um, uh, have you been working with the England guys who've been training at the Oval? Yes. That's, who's been there? It's obviously, the Surrey players, but has uh, J Joss Butler been there and Joffre and Montague? Who else apart from the Surrey guys? Um, yeah, I, th I think um, at times, uh, um, uh, you know, Joffre Archer's been uh, been been there. I, I haven't been there uh, for the entire um, uh, sort of program, um, but there's there's been Josh Butler's uh, been around, and I've been around. Uh, Joffre Archer's been around. Uh, there've been um, some some lads from Middlesex around as well. Um, so yeah, I, anybody that uh, any, anybody that uh, needs need has needed to use uh, the key oval uh, to get get up and ready for being able to play for England. Yeah, they've been more than welcome at the, at the ground. Have you been doing actual coaching, or is it more just sort of dog stick stuff? Um. So. You know, coaching, as far as I'm concerned, is a, it's a matter of sort of building relationships. Now, I, I haven't worked with a great deal. I don't think I could tell Joffre Archer too much about how to how to bowl quickly. Um, but uh, the batters, I've, I've got some good relationships with some of the uh, some of the, some of the Surrey boys. Um, you know, I've done a lot of work with Rory Burns and stuff. So we get back to sort of a, um, going to going through his uh, his sort of checklist of points that he he, he views as important. Uh, similar with uh, with Ollie Pope and Ben Folks, um, uh, and with Amar as well, um, uh, both from a batting and a bowling point of view. Um, so yeah, uh, but yeah, you know, I've, I've sort of I've side armed at uh, Joss, I've side armed at, uh, at anybody that needs to. But as far as from from a coaching point of view, I, I'd need to know the player far better than to, to sort of step in and and suddenly make suggestions as to how they go about. It. So, what you've seen, Joffa looks pretty sharp. Yeah, 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 but you won't be surprised to hear that. He's not playing. He's, you know, he's, that, that's oh, he, he, look, he certainly looks sharp enough. Okay, thanks. Uh, Kevin House. Vikram, uh, many congratulations on the appointment. Look forward to coming down and seeing you at, at some point. Yes, just uh, I don't know if this is a big point or not to you or the players, but whilst we'll be grateful for any cricket we get in this, this programme after August the 1st, how important is it? or not that those red ball games are given first class status to the players and the coaches? Because obviously it'd be great to see some three or four day cricket, but to the players and the coaches, is the first class status an important part of that or not? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to think that they would be given first class status depending on exactly what it is. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I've sort of read uh, numerous proposals as to, to what, what sort of 
uh, what sort of Red Bull cricket uh, is being proposed. And if that is the case, uh, if that comes about, then there'll be competitive competitive games um, and adding sort of first class status to it just uh, just sort of would 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 sort of complete that the idea of competitiveness um, uh, you know if, if it's a case that uh, we, we get to friendlies then I, they'll, they'll still be played in a competitive manner but if, if you've got sort of some sort of competition um, or something at stake then uh, then that's that's far better, obviously, because you've got something to to sort of aim to. Um, but yeah, I, I haven't thought about you know whether 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 first class status um, or or friendlies um, detract from the cricket or not. Uh, ideally, first class status, yes. Uh, ideally, some sort of competition where it it can't obviously be the county championship. Um, I think it's only right that it's not con considered the county championship, but some other. Um, some other competition, then, then that would be ideal. ideal. Uh, and I, you know, I, 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 I sort of repeat my point about, or I stress a point about, you know, ideally, if we can get to the point where we're playing red ball cricket, that, that would be that would be great for everybody involved in the game. Uh, players, coaches, I'm sure members, clubs. Um, I think to some extent we are, uh, and I know there's a, there's a sort of number of difficulties in and around that, and a number of considerations. But if we can get to the point where we're playing red ball cricket, that, that would be ideal. Thank you very much.